Good evening. Um, good evening. My name is Neil Denari. I'm the director of, of SciArc. Um, I have uh, an enormous pleasure and honor to introduce uh, Professor uh, Rafael Mineo tonight, um, who in many ways is, is certainly one of the few architects who uh, doesn't need an introduction, um, who is clearly um, of the architects working today in the world, um, one of the most important architects um, producing work. Um, Needless to say, as well, um, his work will be uh, long uh, a part of our important history of this uh, century and into next century. Um, what I want to do just very briefly is to um, contextualize uh, this work in the context of um, our series tonight um, and this semester on global perspectives in architecture. When, and I'm sure uh, Professor Mineo has been asked this, uh, although his buildings bear the proof, when you're in a foreign country, um, someone might pose the question to you, if you were to build a building here, what would you do? What would it look like? Clearly the question is one about, would you respect our culture? Would you do the research that you need to do to understand who we are? Um, we know what your work is about, what would happen to it if it's built here. Um, it's curious that uh, Professor Mineo is um, uh, building two uh, major projects in the U.S., um, in addition to the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston, a city I know fairly well from having been a, an undergraduate student and who lived just uh, two blocks away from the site of, of, of the museum extension. Uh, as well as, as you all know, um, the uh, cathedral downtown Los Angeles. Here's an architect from Madrid building a, uh, a museum extension in Houston in the shadow of Mies van der Rohe, who himself added on to a neoclassical building. He's here in Los Angeles to build a Catholic church, um, which he obviously deeply knows about in a city um, dealing with the issue of downtown. Uh, by the way, he, he also completed uh, recently a building at Wellesley College in Massachusetts uh, outside Boston, an art center. What does an architect do when they build in another country? Simultaneous to this, he's just been awarded the commission to extend the Prado Museum uh, building uh, and a museum and an institution which I understand he's known since childhood, known very, very well probably can't logically say he knows L.A. from childhood or perhaps Houston. But why does Rafa Mano uh, make these projects? Why is he the architect chosen for these? It's precisely because his work is modern and it also continues uh, particular traditions that I think make his work a kind of discourse that is a kind of sublime one, one that perhaps is something that we should all think about and aspire to in answering this question of what do you build when you build in a place that you don't know. And I think it'll be quite interesting tonight to see his ideas about uh, um, those aspects and those issues relative to the issue of the global. Um, and I would like to also issue to Professor Mineo uh, a commission tonight to um, build a kind of virtual edifice here at SciArc that will perhaps last only for an hour and a half, but that we can call our own, and one that will kind of leave a halo at the school. Um, please welcome Rafael Maneo. I am uh, very happy to be here in SciArc. It is my first time here, but I have been hearing about you 
since many years, almost since this school was founded. I indeed value the endeavor of SIAR, its efforts, its attempts to be a school in continuous research, looking forward to see what the architecture ought to be. I know that is the spirit of the architects who established this uh, school, and I am sure that that is also the spirit of the students. I want to thank the, the kind and undeserved words from Neil Denari, and I want also to thank uh, very especially Margie Reef, with whom I worked together so fruitfully um, already many years ago. I am sure she's doing quite well here, in the same way she did uh, when we worked together at the GSD at Harvard. After these mandatory words of, of gratitude for allowing me to stay here tonight, I would like to present the word or some of the work I am just in this moment doing to share with you which are my problems and which are the questions that I am raising to myself as an architect. I, uh, I am not going to present the, the cathedral because uh, I hope to be able to explain it uh, more extensively one day. I, I, the, the, the work will last two or three, four more years, and, and therefore I hope to have the opportunity to come back to, to present the project. And I don't like to talk too much about projects projects going on, and I still consider the cathedral the work uh, in progress, even though it is almost starting in those in these days, but uh, I let me keep that for, for the coming future. For some reasons, when I started to put the, the, the slides together and, and knowing that the, the subject or the, the common title for all these lectures was uh, globalization or was this new universalism, this uh, uh, common world in which we are living. I think in, in the work I, I was going to put together, uh, I was feeling that the, it was in a certain way reacting against homogenization, that, the, that the, in spite that, that we believe we are living in a world that the, is going to be more and more homogeneous, that, that we are living something that never has happened before. I was thinking that, that perhaps that the, wasn't completely true. So I think that this uh, sense of um, sharing a common culture and, and just uh, working with the same architectural language is something that has happened very often in our Western culture. It happened with the Greeks, with the Romans, with the Gothic in the Renaissance, with the academic architecture of Bossart, even with the modern architecture, with the international style. And yet, in spite of, of uh, that the, all those uh, periods, of, of all those styles could be labeled with the same name, the, the actual truth is that there are such an strong differences that the, we are not able to talk of the same Roman architecture everywhere. It happens to me to be not so many time ago in Baalbek, and, and I realized how different was the Roman architecture when it merged with the Hellenic architecture and produced something so much refined that the, 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 architect, the Roman architecture I remember from, uh, let's say, uh, the remote uh, provinces of Spain. And, and the same could be said about Gothic, when you are 
finding such a strong differences, and, and then the, the, the word difference enters as, as quite an important word, and, and something that seems to me that uh, is what I would like to talk tonight, that, that to see my word, to see, even though surely it is a common logic and a common way of reasoning in front of the architectural problems, at, at the end, uh, what I would like to do is to think in something that doesn't understand the architecture of the, the buildings as a kind of commodity that can be transferred from one country to the other. And instead of that, it's true that we are sharing some common problems and some common principles about today's architecture. And yet, the, the, the conditions are always so different. These conditions that are dictated in first place uh, by, by the, the site, but, but also by the materials, by the culture. You are taking the, the Gothic that was done in, in Catalonia in the, the 14th, 15th century, and you put it in comparing with, with what the, the was in the same years being done in England, for instance, and, and you can see such an strong differences dictated who was dictating those differences. I think that that is the truth, the truth invention of architects, just uh, being able to, to find so difference and enjoying in, in such uh, differences. And that uh, is what I uh, would like today. And I'm putting this, uh, the slides together this, this afternoon. When uh, you will see two projects that could look like, uh, let's say, even using the same elements, the, the museum, the museums we are going to see tonight, Houston and Stockholm, both are working with the same kind of room, and yet the, 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 the different, the, the diversity of the, the, the conditions uh, in one another and another case indeed have produced such a different architecture and such a different buildings, or at least I like to see them in this way. And I would say that the same happened with the, the two other projects two projects uh, with the, uh, just being drawn almost at the same time and yet uh, so different. One in stone, the other in glass, one uh, facing a uh, world uh, of culture, facing history, the other facing nature, and, and, and with the, the, the same idea, with, with the same architectural principles, Indeed, the, the, the projects come out so different. To, to be able to, to recognize those differences uh, seems to me another way of, of uh, let's say, I wouldn't say enjoying, but uh, of living with, with, uh, with, of living in this uh, global world. And uh, therefore, I, I would like today, or I would like to offer this view of my projects with the, this uh, attempt to, to enhance how still is possible the differences and then that, uh, that those differences also have in itself a tremendous appeal, or at least uh, they have for me. But then let's uh, start and let's uh, try to insist in this uh, brief reflection or brief comments about globalization having in, having in front the, the world itself. Then let's start. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It should be here, another one. Well, did this uh, this is a project in Houston. Houston is the, the new building close to the existing museum. The existing museum is this one, a building that Ms. Van der Rohe extended twice, 
first time to this line, then the, the second time this way, and then the new uh, the new building for the institution should use this adjacent block, adjacent block but separated by main street, a very large street, what means that even though it's the same institution and that is very strong link, it could be considered an independent building even though it is the face to face to quite the, the distinguished building like this one. And there is, is Houston, the site is this site. Houston is, for me, or for, for my understanding, a much more interesting city than many people believe it to be. Uh, I like this sense of plenitude, this sense of plenitude that uh, is very much unified by the live oaks. Live oaks are creating the, this kind of seed uh, over the, this uh, uh, horizontality so appealing and, and so compelling and then the, on, on this uh, very let's say indifferent landscape it came the grid and then the grid seems the, to be given to whatever piece of land the same value and yet the, uh, even in the Cartesian grid you, you start the, the, to see how different are all the, the, the sites and, and indeed, uh, in this project, uh, once we have that, uh, we have this site. To tell you the truth, the, the very first uh, architectural decision, the, the first input was to be able to do the choice of which one of those streets should be the reference and should be the starting point. Uh, again, uh, I know that perhaps there are buildings that perhaps don't have any starting point, but very often buildings have a starting point. In this case of the museum, indeed they have a starting point. And then the starting point, where should be the starting point? Should it be facing the church? Should it be facing the, the, the museum? Should it, I, I very clearly saw from the very beginning that instead that planners that had worked on design on the site before me were asking for structuring the building this way and, and from the very beginning I thought it would be better to see that the museum connected this way. That means to, to respect the existing museum but also means to recognize the value of Main Street, of this street connecting uh, Houston downtown with the, the, the medical center that does one of the most important roads in town. Oh my God, I'm sorry. Bueno, I'm sorry. Well, some, something has happened that shouldn't happen. But from, from the very beginning, the, the, the building was for me something that uh, instead of just uh, considering that it was going to be seen as an independent object on the site, I thought that it should use intensively the site. Intensively the site meant to, to recognize the present and the perimeter almost like the base of the construction. That implies an architecture in which the, the condition to be compact, the, the, the compactness becomes the, the key issue. The, this compacity that, or this compactness that uh, in some way tries uh, to, to answer with the building of thinking in buildings in a two-edged way, answering what is going to happen in urban terms, so accepting the perimeter and yet trying to produce something so free as possible, some kind of inner space so rich and so diverse in, the, in, in both shapes and sizes and ways of, of getting light and yet taken and tired and linked by this uh, ribbon 
that uh, was the, the established perimeter. And from the very beginning, I saw the, the, the building as this uh, rather uh, blank perimeter, and yet something freer that uh, enhances the, the, the value of the, 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 the skylight, that the, the value of the, the skyline throughout all the series of, series of skylights, somehow establishing some reference between the richness and the variety of the downtown and the richness and the variety of all those skylights. Bueno. And then here, uh, that is what the plan ends up. From the very beginning, the museum was looking for this uh, collection of rooms. Very much the people from the museum works insisting on that. That they wanted, that is for all masters collection. In a way, the present museum of Ms. Van der Rohe is completely jammed, fed up with the collections that are running from antiquities and oriental art to American paintings to impressionists to old masters and, and therefore the museum has been chopped and, and divided and transformed in such a pitiful way that the, this new museum is absorbing all the old master collection, and that explains why the director very much wanted this system of rooms, and therefore we will liberate the, the Mies Museum that uh, will be left as the Museum for 20th Century Art, and then we are taking this uh, museum form as this uh, collection of rooms, and then this collection of rooms that are the taken by, by or surrounded by, by a very well established perimeter and, uh, and yet as I was saying we are being or trying to be so free as possible from time to time there are galleries but from time to time there are small clusters of rooms and then the museum itself is, is able to consolidate three different collections. One collection of impressionists that should be seen as autonomous. Another collection of uh, Baroque painters that is here. And the, the third one is the collection of the museum itself. And then establishing this uh, covered courtyard with a, a couple of stairs, one mechanical stairs that goes from there to there, uh, conventional stairs that move just in the opposite direction and, and the, the, the elevators and restaurants and all, all those things that liberate the, the, the space there uh, allow to, to, to establish a hidden circulation system, this, this circulation system that allowed to move this way and this way uh, and, and then following this uh, uh, non-evident path you are able to run through, as well as you would be able to, uh, to, to enjoy only one of those uh, the small collections that are forming the museum as a whole. And this, uh, this kind of, uh, let's say, of subdivision, this architecture that speaks more about dividing than aggregating, I like this architecture that uh, works out uh, dividing more than that, that just uh, producing something by a mechanism of simple aggregation. As, as, as I am saying, sharing both the, the, the problems of the urban setting and yet uh, trying to, to produce uh, the inner space so rich as possible. And, that, and this uh, sketch comes here because indeed that was what the, I was pursuing uh, purposely and, and with, uh, with all my, my determination. And that is what this uh, sketch says about, let's see, should I look there to change the... And here you have the, the bulk of the building, the, the bulk of the building 
that uh, has this, uh, this uh, very agitated roof, this uh, almost like, the, because as I said, the, the, the museum is very much thought as the upper floor. The upper floor is where actual people go to enjoy there. The lower floor is, is mostly the, the more instrumental floor somehow, even though it keeps one of the most important collections of the museum, the, the American collection. And then there you see how important it is to see how you are colonizing the site. We are colonizing the site here uh, with the, 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 the courtyard you saw in the upper floor, but then also this uh, establishes the, 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 the entrance and, and gives the, the, the structure to the ground floor. The ground floor in which is so important this alley, uh, this alley that uh, just in a very different way than me, that uh, it, it was modern for so many other uh, means. The, the, this project is more sympathetic to the car. We are providing this uh, access to car and buses in this uh, covered space that I wouldn't like to be called a portico, but uh, much more this uh, open architectural experience that allowed you to go into and then all the facilities of the museum, let's say the uh, guard rows, uh, the ticket office information and so on, and yet and also the entrance for the temporary exhibition rooms that happens to be, here is a courtyard that goes through and that uh, enters light even to the ground floor and is a, a courtyard for American uh, sculpture and then the, the, the American uh, collection and then the temporary exhibition room that allowed you to enter there, move around and go out directly without interfering with the museum, the shop, and other services, and so on. The same uh, kind of a structure, of formal structure, that we have seen in the other museum happens to be here. Oh, my God. Well, may we change both? No. Naturally, this uh, architecture I'm talking about is not, is not something new at all. Uh, in this, uh, there are so many examples in the architectural history. I have taken these two just uh, as a token. The, the, this one is this bath in a small city. It's an is, 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 uh, Islamic architecture in Spain, I very much like that. It's much more complex than the nine square grid uh, cube problem. You, you see there how the, the square has been divided, again, the, the issue of the dividing instead of aggregating. Then I like to see in this architecture that is composing a sense of, of unit, unity and unitarian figure for sake of adding the, the, these uh, quite independent figures, quite independent pieces with its own character and proportions and so on. And there uh, you have Terrani that in, again, he's respecting so faithfully uh, and, and, and so strictly the, the, the perimeter and yet inside he, he's able to create such a powerful collection of architectural events with the hyperstyle hall, with all the other pieces, with this uh, labyrinth and, and so on. I think that this, uh, uh, I am simply remembering in a building like that, that it's possible to do architecture out of fragmentation that is, is quite interesting to explore some of those avenues that are, uh, that, that are allowing you the same degree of, of freedom and yet 
allowing you also to pay the due respect to the, the urban site conditions that I consider to be one of the most important phases of the buildings and architecture itself. I would like to change both. I think it would be easier if I am telling you, may, may you move because, thank you. Well, uh, why we are not going, well, that doesn't matter. No, <laughs> go back, back, well, it's the same. That, that goes together. Just, just to show you, uh, we are cutting there, we are cutting throughout the entrance. The entrance here is the alley, the, the much more compressed space of, of the lobby, then going up in this very powerful uh, and, and quite powerful in dimensions, powerful in activity with the stairs in cross direction and with something almost like a bridge that, that connects this landing with this other that produces already something like an introductory, introductory space to the, to the collections. And then the, 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 the galleries that we will see later. In the middle between the ground floor and the, the, the upper floor, the upper floor being understood as the museum, it happens to be uh, a sandwich floor that is being used for administrative endeavors as well as for the drawing collection. Next, please. And here you have another section. I, I, I like you to pay, well, to, to consider this freedom with which the pieces have been put together. That is a sort of a strong contrast between the, the, let's say, quite strict conditions of the rectangle dictated by the streets and later on all the, the, the freedom of the several rooms put together in the upper floor. You see here the administrative floor I was talking about. Now we are cutting this way. In the lower floor it happens to be a cafe and then the, the entrance happens to be here. You, you realize this uh, uh, way of, of working, providing the colonization of, of the site in the shorter direction with the, this uh, large courtyard that allowed you then later to establish circulation. Next, please. And then another section, section that the, throughout the, the, the American collection and, and the rooms put the one together with the other, almost like the, the pieces of uh, the pieces of ceramic of the bases in a Morandi uh, still life, just uh, close to, together, forming this this kind of package, and the, the most the, and, and who the protagonize the, this architecture is this room, the, this room that I have already experienced in the Thyssen Bornemisza collection in Madrid. A room that, that the, in the, the architectural history has also some uh, relatives in, on time. Uh, these kind of rooms were explored by the first time, as much as I know, by Sir John Son in, in Dalich Gallery. Since then, many architects have used that for working in museums. And yet, I have added something that uh, didn't happen before, and, and then is this small inverted uh, pyramid that, that some, most of the people working with these uh, kind of rooms put directly the skylight into the dome and by, by so doing uh, the light uh, that they achieve is more uneven than the life I got by putting this uh, intermediate throat, this uh, mixing piece where the light entering from the skylight is diffracted and reflected and yet and, and therefore uh, expanded into the walls in a much more even way. Next, please. And then the, the, just you to remind something that, that probably 
should be caught in, in talking about this kind of museums, that is uh, Johnson House in uh, Lincoln Inn in London, uh, and then the landscape of our uh, roof, that will be something not uh, completely alien to what uh, Sir Johnson was accepting, almost with the, the feeling of a modernist, something that just happened without being composed, without being ordered, as the result of the, 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 the strength that, that was emanating from the, 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 the interior, from the inner spaces. Next, please. And then, uh, I'm sorry that they are so dark. Uh, I had been, I, I worked in this building three or four years during the, the design period, and, and always the, 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 the alley was uh, quite an important uh, element, quite an important episode. That is one of the many versions I did. I don't use to change radically um, in, the, in the development of a project. I, I, I like it better to develop the, the ideas uh, that I trust and that, that the very often are, are those very first ideas dictated by a certain instinct. Uh, naturally, this instinct rooted in, in all what could be seen as, as experience or knowledge or life or feelings or, or whatever. But the, the Ali is quite different today, but the, it was there from the very beginning. Next, please. And here the building, uh, a photograph of the model, the Ali. Paradoxically, this building that hasn't to do with the Corbusier aesthetic, and yet it pays a tribute to Le Corbusier in sense of Le Corbusier was very much interested, even obsessed with, with the fact that buildings should be should establish a friendly relationship with cars. I, I like also to give buildings this ability to, to receive in a friendly way cars. I realize that we are not floating the building uh, with the pilotis as Le Corbusier did, and yet I share with him, or I have learned from him, to, to be more precise, this uh, respect to be paid to the cars. And there you see the, the, the old uh, building, uh, the old uh, Miss Museum, and our museum, our serving the old masters at the end of the century, he is still serving the 20th century art. I think that by accepting, uh, by receiving the heritage of the old masters, we are liberating and indeed the, uh, allowing the Miss Museum to enjoy the best of itself. Next, please. And here you see another photograph of the work going on. And, and then uh, you remember, here is the Miss Museum. We are there. And, and probably you have still in mind, or you could re remember the, the drawing, the very uh, drawing from the very beginning when I talk about relating the, the skylights with the, the, the skylights with the downtown. And, and indeed, uh, I still like to see this this uh, museum as this a small city in itself, uh, able to give to each one of the rooms its own or their own character. Next, please. Then the, the next project, and then talking about those differences, differences, uh, curiously, both museums, the, the Stockholm Museum and the Houston Museum are sharing the same element, almost the same room, and yet the, 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 the site conditions produce two completely different buildings, almost somebody, not, not I wouldn't say that they are different, opposite buildings, but, but quite different buildings. I, I, this building precedes uh, to the other. We started with that in 1991, and after uh, Design the, the, this building. I start to work in 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 the in the Houston Museum. You will see now the difference. Then, even though, well, that was finished before, and in a certain way, he was first. I think that with the Houston Museum, I finished 
or I wouldn't like to insist in this, uh, let's say, series or, or in, in this family of buildings, and I will, I, I will try, or, and I would like to go into the new museum with a different approach. I don't know. I don't know which. We are now here in, in Stockholm. That is, a, in my view, I am sure also for all of you, will consider to be quite a wonderful, quite an extraordinary city. I don't know how people is no more aware about the beauty of this city that uh, enjoys, uh, let's say, enjoys the presence of geography and, and yet at the same time uh, it uh, is so keen of, of uh, let's say, so, so keen of building something very solid. But it's a city that, unfortunately for it, it hasn't any rhetoric. The, the, the geography prevents of whatever sense of grandeur, whatever sense of, let's say, overimposed sense of authority throughout architecture. Only perhaps the royal palace that, that is this nostalgic longing, longing of, of uh, Italian architecture speaks about this authority. Otherwise, architecture merges with the geography more than nature in such a powerful and beautiful way. And, and here, the, the, the city started with this small, quite well protected island. It's a, a city close to the Hanseatic cities of the Baltic Sea. And then the, the, the city started to jump into the, into the land with the, with the bridges. And another of those small islands was the headquarters of the Navy. And this uh, headquarters of the Navy had uh, all that, that you could expect, let's say shipyards, uh, hospitals, uh, dormitories, uh, prisons. It was, again, a completely small or little world, autonomous little world, that uh, end up of being the, the headquarters of the, the Navy at the beginning of this century, at the end of last century, and then being transformed in a collection of uh, cultural buildings. Next, please. And then the nice thing about the, the, this competition was that we were allowed to say where we would like to put the museum. And then, obviously, many entries look for just uh, enjoying the short and uh, establishing a much more direct dialogue with, with the ocean. But uh, that uh, didn't seem to me to be the wiser the strategy. He, this is a project that speaks about how important the, the very first distinctions are in architecture. And then uh, I came, uh, for some reason, I identified uh, uh, this uh, very long building that was the most awkward of all the buildings existing in the island. This building that was built for uh, making the, the, the cables for the sailing, and that, uh, 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 that speaks about its length. That is the, the, the chapel for the, uh, the, the people, for the Navy, for the seamen. And then the, 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 the new museum, I thought that the new museum should, in a way, take advantage of this uh, existing piece. And I put it adjacent to it, creating this uh, quite interesting and quite intriguing slot that is going to be something like a corridor providing access to these clusters of rooms. Here is the, the, the temporary exhibition room. People enter from here. It is very much the version I have given of the Swedish culture, a version that indeed admires this lack of, let's say, the monumentality, this ability to live without uh, intimidating with the architectural statements, uh, life, even cultural life, 
and then you enter from here, you have there most of the facilities and the, the cafe enjoying and recovering the views of the bay, and then the, the, this corridor allowed you to move into these clusters of rooms, and these clusters of rooms, again, are uh, singularizing and, and giving its uh, own identity to each one of the rooms, to each one of the collections, and uh, that is for the Swedish collection, the, the, let's say the traditional avant-garde and the most uh, uh, contemporary art. And next, please. And, and you see there how the building ends up. I, I very much, uh, by doing the choice that the rooms uh, should be very much uh, themselves, I thought that that uh, worked, uh, worked effectively with the, the, the character of the island, the character of the island that I interpret as something that uh, is very much defined by the, an architecture that could be seen as pavilion-like architecture. Each piece stands by itself. There's not neither the streets nor the, the, the parties are saying and dictating what is going to happen. I, I like it, this kind of almost picturesque-like uh, own entity of each one of the single separate buildings and uh, that is what quite clearly reflects this uh, either view of the island that the building is there almost quite uh, completely merged with the old other starting buildings the, the building that uh, I designed or that, that I entered in the competition was taking advantage of this building but also using this other that was the, the old gymnasium. And then, as much as the, the Museum of Modern Art are sharing with the, this museum that was the architectural museum, the facilities here, the, the restaurant, the restroom, the shop, the information, the, the mm, garrobe and so on, are providing access to the architectural museum, access to the uh, modern museum, with, the, again, the same location for the temporary exhibition room, that is this one, and, and then the, this wing that comes here are the, 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 the offices and the library for the, the Architectural Museum that has also a small uh, classroom over there. Next, please. As, as you realize, by putting the building in the top, again, we have uh, we have this uh, horizontal percourse. Uh, as much as, for instance, a museum like Wesley speaks about verticality, but if possible, it seems to me that there are more effective museums just allowing you to move horizontally and are allowing you to run on more than, well, but, but again, impossible dictate norms or, or trying to, to create some rules that, that could end up with this homogeneity I was uh, talking about. Uh, you should be ready to, to accept what every problem, better than every, to say every side, or to, but whatever every case is in a way asking for. And, and it seems to me that I would like better to think that I has been hired as an architect to say something about some specific problem that that, uh, that just to think that somebody is buying the, the, the building that I, that I do. I am not therefore selling pre-established buildings. I very much, and I am anticipating perhaps or answering some of the questions that have been raised by Neil Denari, I am very much ready and, 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 and very much pleased in being offered to discuss the, the architectural answer that some construction is asking for. In this case, for instance, it seems to me that coming to the top of the island was quite advantageous because it allowed to, to move horizontally in the museum, but also allowed us to use the, 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 the height between the 15 meters that has the top of the island and the, the, the shore. 
and then we put two intermediate levels that are uh, facilities for the museum and then I use the access from here for goods, staff, works of art and everything that was needed. We are now in the, in the, the intermediate uh, level. In this intermediate level we have the, the drawing and the etching and engraving and then photography without natural light and then the, a small, well, an auditorium for 500 people, then a small uh, film theater and another is a small uh, video room and then the workshops and so on. We are now in the intermediate. Next, please. Next, please. And now we are in the lower level. We are entering just in the short level and then the, the, the works of art, tracks and um, storage and the workshops and then offices and another entrance from here that allowed you to go up into the upper level. Then you have here some uh, images of how the building works uh, together with the skylight of the island. Very important, the color, for instance, it was uh, extensively discussed. The, the historians very much wanted the building to be painted yellow. I resisted that as much as I could. And uh, that at the end, we enter into this, uh, and, uh, because I, I was looking for something, at the beginning, more grayish, so something that uh, establishes a certain continuity between the think of the roof and the walls, and, and yet, that at the end, we, ended, we end up with this red without uh, conceding the, the yellow. I think that that was recognized as something that uh, worked better for the island, and next interventions in the island are accepting the same diversity that, that uh, characterize the, the autonomy of the, the, the different buildings. Next, please. And here, the section, you see there quite clearly what I said. You, you see there the upper floor, again, with the, uh, with the theory of, of rooms that uh, work independently, then the gymnasium, and then, then the two levels I was talking about. And here, the museum with the frozen ocean. Next, please. Uh, no, the other one. And then here, you, 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 that is the top of the island. Then the, the thick husset, the, the building to the, the factory of the cables, the slot in the middle, the corridor, and the temporary exhibition room, and then the, the balcony, the, the, this balcony that, that allowed you to enter again into the, into the, the, the city. This is a museum that, that very much tries, it can be seen as the, the temple for the world so far. It's much more, I, I wanted it to keep a certain flavor of the domestic uh, culture that, in my view, so strongly characterize Scandinavian life. And, and therefore, I, I very much uh, wanted the, the, the museum to be seen as, as something that reflected, again, the, the city they are living through. And under this point of view, the, the museum recovered, recovers a certain city dimension, an urban dimension, and uh, avoids uh, whatever reading that could be done of it as, uh, let's say, as a citadel or as an isolated piece. In a way, it's almost like enjoying the, the works of art, almost if they were part, they, 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 they are pieces of your own daily life. Next, please. And then there's the section through there. Next, please. And then the, the, this is the, the series of clusters. Here, the, the, these clusters are not, uh, they are, again, uh, the, the problem is quite different from the problem you have seen in, in, uh, in Houston. Here, uh, you see there the, 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 the freedom in, in accepting the, this kind of broken conditions that, that the, 
are reflecting the collections, as I said, but, but here we were in an island where the, the, the profile was of, of to maintain the, the, this sense of freedom in the island, don't uh, imposing the very powerful mass of construction was uh, so important, and that speaks about the detection both, as I said, in the choice of uh, identifying each room with uh, its own uh, pavilion-like condition in the roof, uh, as well as defining the series of clusters. Again, you would be able to, to follow, in, even in Le Corbusier, some of those attempts uh, to subdivide the, the square and the rectangle with regular figures. The experience here has been much more to see how the spaces are able to, to produce a certain sense of breathing, of moving, respecting the shape with the same form, and yet only dimensionally you, you are able to, to keep the building breathing. Next, please. And then the, the, the competition model, quite close to what we did at the end, and one of the rooms, one of the largest rooms. Next, please. You see there the shaft I was talking about. Here with the, I think that the, this is a word from, I, I, I don't remember now the name of this. Cunelis. Uh, Next, please. Uh, now we have lost something, but doesn't matter. No, well, you see there uh, what uh, I said, we are uh, just uh, uh, doing a building that wants uh, to be felt as uh, changing and changing for sake of the dimensions, as I said. This dimension that forces the, to change the profile, there is a moment when you are starting with six by six, six by six met meters, that means uh, 18 by or 20 by 20 feet, and then you are keeping that till 30, but then when you reach into the 60 feet, you, you, you need to change the profile, and, and you are not anymore growing in a, uh, in a, um, how is the word, that, well, maintaining the shape, but, but also transforming the profile. Next, please. And here we are in the temporary exhibition room that is a much more oriented system of skylights with this uh, ability to be splitted uh, following those are again the 20 by 20 feet and then you could imagine the partitions that the, the temporary exhibition room is suggesting. Next, please. And then uh, I went into... Uh, an extensive use of wood, something that we don't use so often in Spain, jams that are such an important element in whatever museum, the crossing, the passing. Here, the jams are complemented with doors. We are in one of the doors in the outdoors, the, the, the corridor. So this door would allow to enclose one of those clusters. Next, please. And then some images to, to give you this uh, flavor of the museum. We, we designed some of the furniture, those public furniture, not the furniture from, for the, the, the dining room or the, the libraries that we will see now. Next, please. Here we are in the architectural museum. The architectural museum is this, 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 that is the gymnasium, and when we added that, that, and then I changed completely here, uh, and then I created this sort of unbalanced condition, and as much here, we are growing almost like a crescent, uh, as I said, taking advantage of this bar, of the length of this bar. Here, that was like a wing, so, creating and, and enjoying and celebrating this open space, this courtyard, and that is pivoting on this uh, the space of the library that is there. 
And then in this moment, it seems to me that, uh, well, to pay an homage to, to the, the, the 20th century architecture makes sense, and, and we did that uh, following, I don't know, course example, but what I have learned throughout in my years of students, or whenever next, please. And here the interior of the library. Next, please. And some details of the stairs, and that gives you some sense of how the the, the ambience works. Next, please. Here is the, the library for photography in, in the second floor. I think that I mentioned that in passing. Next, please. And here again, again, uh, regardless this. Uh, the, the, the importance that the character and that the, the feeling of the building has. Indeed, it seems to me that it was this uh, strategic decision from the very beginning what matters the most. Uh, and I, I think that it's quite interesting to see how almost the same element we have seen in Houston is producing such a different building than there. The, here, the, the, the building is, is more ready to, to accept uh, this uh, loose, uh, broken condition being and taking help of uh, the structure provided by the tick who said, and yet the, the, the building the, uh, understands the, the, the urban setting almost like this uh, the fragmented profile much more that the, the, or the, in quite a different way of what that I did in, in Houston, where the, the, the roads themselves, by defining the perimeter, enclosed the, the, the space. And, and then here, uh, the, the, the freedom is the freedom in, in handling the mass of the building. There, the, the freedom was the freedom in handling the interior and, and the, the spaces of the building. The, the, the slide on the left is the, what the, the use that has been given to the, the, the gymnasium, where the permanent collection of uh, the architectural museum was installed. Next, please. Now, this is a project that uh, the Stockholm was opened in February 1998, six months ago. This is a building still going on. It's a building in a city in the south of Spain, Murcia, something like 200 kilometers down Valencia. And then this building is a, a small building for the municipality of Murcia. Murcia is a city of 200,000 inhabitants, the capital of one of the provinces of the south of Spain not Andalusia, but just in the middle between Valencia and Andalusia. And then City Hall is there, facing in the other side, and they have this uh, site, rather small site, but quite interesting, facing this uh, splendid cathedral, splendid uh, facade of the uh, early 18th century cathedral, 1720, something like that, uh, late Baroque. And uh, almost from the same years is this palace that was the palace built by El Cardinal Belluga, that was a cardinal who played quite an important role in Spanish politics as well as in Italy. It was claimed that he could, could have been pope, but uh, the, the, it ended up his days in this palace that he built instead of uh, taking care of St. Peter's chair. And, and then, next, please. Here, two drawings of the, the plaza. We are now working out the pavements of the plaza. The cathedral was raised on the site of an old mosque, something that happens in uh, several cities of the south of Spain, for instance, Seville. And, and it creates a, a, a chain, or a collection of quite beautiful open urban spaces that are very much the result of, of falling down houses that was attached 
to the cathedral itself, but the, that gives the, the, to the cathedral this sense of lack of, uh, let's say, lack of uh, compositional value, uh, and yet the quite a very close uh, relationship of the volumes and textures for all these other spaces. And then uh, the entrances to the cathedral happens to be um, the main door is there, the door of the facade that you saw. The, here is the palace of the Cardinal Belluga. Here a collection of um, early 20th century, late 19th century houses. And here our site, you, you see there what uh, we were trying to do. Next, please. And then here, here is the building that I put uh, facing the other building. In a way, you are never seeing both buildings at once. That, that is quite, quite an interesting experience because you are relating both buildings for sake of the space in which they are, but you are never comparing and yet you keep memories of what you have seen and therefore I thought that the building facing the cathedral shouldn't be uh, far away from this retablo-like structure that this uh, facade has and therefore that is a late 20th century version of what could be a retablo, something that accepts somehow the, the the abstract volumetric condition of this piece to which I have, I, I try to give so careful alignment as possible and trying to be quite careful in defining the height, defining the dimensions of, but and yet I like it to diverge and, and to do the columns in such an erratic way, in a way we are unable to impose the, the sense of hierarchy that, that characterize this facade and instead here the, the, the only element ordering the, the facade is this uh, opening there. This uh, building on the, other, on the other side should play in this uh, public space that is the, the nicest and the most important public space of Murcia. It was the way of, but the, the civil authorities, the, the, let's say the mayor, didn't enjoy the, this public space and therefore I am giving to the mayor the opportunity of, uh, let's say, sharing with, with the bishop the, the, the same, uh, let's say, the, the same celebration of the, the most dignified urban space of the city. I kept the, 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 the height of this balcony to, to the mayor the window there, a bridge and a small passages connecting both buildings. I, I excavated, the, the, I took out an existing fountain there and then I connected directly both buildings. I decided to use for the pavement the same pavement that I have seen in Rome, that say basalt and travertine because this is almost like a Piranesi image of, of, of Rome is the closest image to, to a Roma, Roman plaza that you can see in Spain. Next, please. And here again, uh, one other thing that I paid a lot of attention was that the, I didn't want to compete with the two existing buildings by opening a door there. And therefore, the door exists on the side. The building is just looking into the neighborhood or looking into the mm, labyrinth the, the labyrinth of streets ending up here. And this is a very small office building. And I excavated uh, this uh, courtyard that brings you down into the small cafeteria. A bit the same strategy, the strategy that I follow in, in Houston, I realize. Next, please. And here you see the building. The, the building uh, is, is again trying to to, to accept the, the, the conditions of this abstract blog, an abstract blog that I submitted to visual, let's say, visual precision by, by twisting and, and establishing the height that, that I consider to be the, the rightest one, the first one, and then later on the, the, the ability to, 
let's say, to break down whatever sense of order I'm providing this kind of uh, uh, inapprehensible greed is what the building is about, then the, you see there the fountain that we are taking out and removing from there. Next, please. And then the, the, the building speaks very much, and this, that is why this slide comes here, it speaks very much about creating, a, a, let's say, favoring quite a, a new the collection of, of views of the city by filtering the city, by, by filtering the, the old cathedral, you are uh, indeed uh, helping people to value what otherwise, without those frames, again, I ought to recognize that I have learned so much for framing others architecture with ours from Le Corbusier. He, he used to do that so often and it's something so effective in theatrical ways to, to put and to value the, 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 the architecture you have around. And that is what I did here. And that means that the, the upper of, of this uh, room from where the mayor could uh, go into the, to, to, to uh, attend the, the, the processions in, in Holy Weeks or just uh, enjoying a, a public celebration in the plaza is going to happen enhancing the, the, the value of, of this uh, most uh, powerful monument of the city. Next, please. And you see there again the, the stone and, and, and the new building. Next, please. Next. You see there how it works as the background neutralizing an existing building there. And unfortunately, I don't see it. Next, please. And then here, the passage connecting both. That is what we are removing. I, I, I think that the plaza is coming along beautifully and providing with the black or the uh, intense gray of the basalt and the travertine, quite the, the, the kind of uh, carpet that, that was needed by buildings like that. And there are the collection of the several models we made. Obviously, that, that, that seems to be the, the fruitful of uh, some kind of randomness, uh, good luck, or randomness of living in the hands of fortune. What happens it isn't true, and, and indeed was very much the result of a, a very or so the strongly control as possible in visual terms of, of what was happening there. Next, please. Now, next project, and in this case, uh, I was talking about how I was uh, the, impacted by, by the presence of the, of the cathedral and the, the, the attempt to, to reproduce a new retablo in my building here, and therefore, the entire building speaks about, let's say, historical context. Here, this is a city in the north of Spain, San Sebastián. And here, I will say that this is quite a city that lives with the geography in a very beautiful way, very ordered way. It hasn't the kind of, uh, let's say, uh, diversity that we admire in Stockholm. But it has this collection of architecture of geographical events. We have beaches and caves and rivers and promontories and mountains and hills and almost like uh, uh, all those uh, accidents that we have learned when in primary school we started to know how to name the, the, the nature things around us. And then the, the building that the, we were asking to go on was there. Next, please. Was there. Next. And then uh, the, the building, somebody oh, in the 70s, the, they started to build something. They, they were years of tremendous turmoil in Spain. And then they, they, they abandoned the, the, the site. 
the city hall board the, the, the site and uh, he it, it hold the, the site during the entire 80s and then at the beginning of the 90s he called for a restricted competition among six architects an international competition and they decided that mine should be built and uh, then I think that they were very courageous I, and in this case myself that I ought to be quite respectful with the, the, the existing conditions I thought that in this moment we didn't need any more of this uh, conventional construction that uh, it was more important to relate the, the, the new construction with the, 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 the geography that I was talking about that was around, that it was time to don't spoil this uh, promontory, this uh, tip that had been produced by the river ending in the ocean by enlarging the, the urban fabric that instead I wanted something that had the, the, the scale and could suggest uh, something of the almost geological conditions of, of that of this geological geographical condition that I identified the site. In this case I changed the scale and I matched my architecture with the, the, the nature, with the landscape, and then these two frozen rocks, one is dynamized and oriented to one of the, the mountains, the other that is called Ulia, the other to this other that is called Urgul. Next, please. And then this uh, instinctive answer of, of saying that the, I, I was going to put there those masses uh, with these uh, uh, unknown urban pieces that they are not, that they don't want anymore to belong to the city, but to belong to, to the landscape. Uh, this uh, instinctive answer uh, ought to, to, to be developed just, let's say, including and uh, accepting all, all the given given by the uh, all the given provided by the program and then the program asks for two large auditoriums one for 1800 people the other for 700 people then uh, we, we provided we have this this common entrance for both of them this other and then at the same time you are entering into something that is going to be uh, convention centered. This room allowed to, to gather together 500 people and is able to be splitted. And then the meeting uh, dining room large with other rooms and so on. Then some shops and then a restaurant facing the ocean and the city and the parking garage underneath. Here and again I am very much taking advantage of what I have learned from those architects that has been working with fragmentation. But, but here again, fragmentation doesn't happen as the, the result, as the result of something that seems to be dictated by the fortune that, that happened by chance. Just the, the, the contrary. I, I indeed uh, learned from those who work with fragments or with, with those who work with the, the fragmented architecture, and yet I, I indeed tried to look for the, the precise uh, location. Here the project speaks because again, and uh, coming back into the, the Houston the problem, again I am accepting here quite uh, a strict the present, quite a strict perimeter, but by throwing those pieces there, I am working and experiencing myself the value of the interstitial spaces, working together with those rather regular figures, which uh, functionality and, and the way they work, I know pretty well. Next, please. And then here, a model that here we are in the lower floor in a much more complex condition. I don't need to say anything but that. 
And here, to say that these large cubes, again, the, the way in which I am working with the, this uh, auditorium in, in the middle of one of those cubes is just moving, just uh, controlling and working in both ways uh, by displacing the, the, the piece, I am able to, to dynamize and, and to generate the, the, the space uh, that the, that the, the, the space that becomes the, 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 the lobby. We, we will see that quite clearly now. Next, please. You see there, what I was saying is that indeed I was interested in the, the, the moving that. The, I, I, for me, it has been such a valuable experience uh, to see how to generate architecture, accepting the, the blunt and, and the, 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 the quite well-defined conditions of the perimeter, and yet by the slight movements, being able to, to establish the system of, of distances that, that allowed to go through with this uh, all those the stairs allowing people to move through and to reach the, the location in, in, in the auditorium, as well as working all around, when working all around. This is a, a way of, well, but for so doing, I needed to connect underneath the, 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 the buildings with all the, the, the facilities. And, and because, as you know, very often auditoriums indeed uh, required this, uh, serving the spaces gravitating around the scene. In this case, it happens to be underneath, and, and that is what allows this kind of device. Next, please. And here you, you have that under construction. We will see later on what happens. And you see here, again, the, the, the section, the auditorium, the concrete, the volume that encloses the space inside, then the, the upper floor that has uh, mechanical installations and the stairs. Next, please. You see here the, the stairs uh, still without uh, being uh, cladded. The, the stairs that, that somehow, oh, I, I like to see then almost like a system of baroque stairs, but I like also to think about people going up into the, the upper seats and yet enjoying altogether this sense of, uh, let's say, social or, or shared celebration, either of a concert or the whatever kind of a concert or, or an opera or whatever. I, I like to think in this, uh, let's say, visualization of, of this uh, uh, joyful moment when, when you are going to take your, your seat. In a way, these stairs are speaking almost of a cathartic experience to be experienced, uh, to be felt when going into the theater you, uh, you, you, you celebrate this uh, sense of, of common, uh, common festivity with the others. You, you see there the stairs in the model, and you see here the stairs. It is so rewarding for architects to uh, see materialize what we have been foreseen for years in models and so on. But the, I think that it's so effective to help people to figure out what things are going to be with models that indeed I, am, I have learned that so much in American schools and I think that in spite of the new techniques, uh, I think that the still working with models is so mandatory of, in my view, so much needed that uh, I, I was, I had been rewarded in coming to the school and seeing that the workshops were so full of people and so active as I saw it today this evening. Next, please. And here you have the, 
the structure. Because this project, next please. This project, next please. The, this project that the, uh, I talk about fragmentation, but this project also has learned a lot for, for architects that work in the ways of minimalism. And, and the, in a way, the, the, the problem here, or the problem for me was how we would be able to, to maintain the abstract condition of those cubes, how we would be able to, the, let's say, to stand for with the, this, uh, the, I, I said that I was rejecting the urban fabric, but I didn't want the, the, the cladding to transform the cubes in a tilted conventional cutting wall. And, and therefore, we went into these uh, uh, bent uh, uh, pieces of glass. They are uh, two inches and a half thick and uh, three meters long, 75, two feet and a half width. And, and then the, uh, I like it, and it seems to me that that was the only way of dealing with this uh, abstract willingness or abstract, abstract will that, that was in the base of the project. But it was also very much required by the weather conditions of the site. The, being the site so close to the ocean, it receives the, the wind and, and the water. And the, I very much like it to see the glass almost like the fish scales able to, to receive the, the wetness of the medium without, the, well, without eroding and, and without wasting the, the, the material with which the building was built. Next, please. And here you have something. The, the building is just under construction. These slides has been taken four or five weeks ago. Next, please. And here again, the structure, the steel structure that uh, completely disappeared once the glass is clad in both facades. Next, please. And you see there the st another view of the stair with the, the, the glass starting to be clad in. Going up into the stairs, you are still keeping some views of the ocean, but the ocean is being seen throughout a huge window of uh, 24, but, uh, more than 24, is, um, yes, uh, 20, 20, 24 feet by, by 24. But the, in a way, uh, I very much wanted that the, the people there are enjoying the, the, the ocean and the sea, but entering in this uh, so abstract and so humanized space to, to look at the, the to recover the, the views of the sea and, and to be aware of how wonderful location that the city has and the, the, the theater has, indeed seems to me, more attractive than just uh, living in this case a panoramic window and this panoramic window doesn't exist. Next, please. And then the interior, those uh, interstitial spaces that uh, we were talking about. Next, please. And that allowed the, the, the freedom with which you are moving all around. And then, uh, again, the, the building under construction the building and the construction that indeed uh, we are maintaining very much what uh, we promised in the competition. And this uh, slide comes uh, the, to remind you on how important in this case was the, to change the, the, the usual relationship of, of building toward building, and in this case, building to nature. And uh, then, uh, and again, I would like you to think about the, the, the such a strong difference as mediates from here into the Murcia building that we have seen before. And I think that with these uh, two the slides, I am finished my presentation today. today. Thank you very much.
Ay, ay, ay. I don't know whether it's, it's too late, but uh, I am ready for some questions. Is, is it too late? How much I last? I, an hour? No. Julia. <laughs> there are some questions? Local culture. I mean, I, when uh, when I started, I started saying that the medieval architects, let's say people in Gothic times, were able to serve both the the the, the culture that they enjoy conquering, that that was the new language. And yet, be being able to to uh, be sensitive to the specific conditions of each side, that that means that uh, I would like to tell you that I very much would like to put what you are calling local culture. I wonder whether local culture exists today. Pro probably they don't exist so much as they used to be before. Still, something happens but probably not in such a powerful way as it happens, let's say, 500 years ago. And yet, uh, I think that without missing and, and without forgetting the, the, the value of the things, the intellectual substance you are looking for, I don't see so difficult to be permeated by what could be considered more let's say, even, even easy to be done, or easier to be done. Uh, I think that local culture means, uh, from time to time, don't be so stubborn for ignoring what the people does more easily. <laughs> I don't know whether, I, I realize that perhaps is a very, well, easy way of answering your question, but I, I will resist to speak about local culture. I think it seems to me that it's a term that uh, it would be difficult to be applied today. Therefore, in this case of San Sebastian, would you call that local culture? I, I think that, that has to do with the specific conditions. I would like better to speak about those specific conditions that just thinking in the aura of a local culture that forces you to do something in some specific way. When you're doing a theater, uh, to what extent do you work with a theater designer for the stage uh, equipment and the, and the needs of the theater person? Well, I think that uh, in our in our country, unfortunately, we are not so used to have the client so involved in the project as you do. I mean, it is my experience that the more developed the country, in the for better and worse, more you are including this uh, multitude of consultants that that very often are doing your work very, very difficult. And then we don't have in Spain still so many consultants. They are coming, but, <laughs> but, but uh, uh, and therefore uh, we are including them uh, naturally because I don't know myself too much about all the machinery, machinery that, that is needed and I, we have used some of them for establishing the budget and for taking care of the latest step of the construction. But uh, I, 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 I will say that this, still our country is a bit looser than the, you are here. I, I, I didn't answer uh, completely your question, 
but I, I think that I put John the hint for understanding the way we work. Question. Well, well, I think that perhaps it's too late. Thank you very much.